In this video, we're going to be looking at the following example. We're interested in finding the area of the region that lies inside the curve r equals 3 cosine theta and outside the curve r equals 1 plus cosine theta. So this adds another um, step to doing our area problems because I'm not just finding the area inside one curve, but I'm actually finding the area between curves. So let's look at what region this is talking about. So um, this curve r equals 3 cosine theta, this is a circle. Okay, um, it's also traced out on the interval from 0 to pi. Um, and this curve r equals 1 plus cosine theta, we've seen this type before. This is the cardioid type curve, and it's traced out on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we're saying that we want the region that's inside the circle and outside the cardioid. So the cardioid's the red curve, the blue curve is the circle. So outside the cardioid and inside the circle, so we're talking about this region here, this crescent type region. Okay, so we want to figure out the area between the red curve and the blue curve. So one of the things that we're going to need to do, just like we did for finding the area between curves when we had some curve um, f of x and g of x, is we had to find where those two curves actually intersected. So I need to find these intersection points here. So I want to know where my two curves are equal to each other, um, excuse me, to each other. So I need to find intersection points. We have to be a little bit careful when finding intersection points because um, two curves can be um, intersecting at a certain point but have different representations of those points in each of the curves. But since we have the picture together with doing some algebra, um, we'll make sure not to miss any of our, our intersection points that way. So I'm trying to find where 3 cosine theta is equal to 1 plus cosine theta. So notice this is going to be where 2 cosine theta is equal to 1, or cosine theta is equal to 1 half. Okay, so remember that cosine is equal to a half at pi thirds. Okay, it would also be equal to a half, okay, at um, an angle in the fourth quadrant, let's say, also at 5 pi thirds, okay? Now there's other representations of um, 5 pi thirds that gets me to that same location in the fourth quadrant. I could also say that's the location negative pi thirds, for example. Okay, so you have to think about how to use this, this information. So I've found that my intersection points here um, correspond to the angles theta equals pi thirds and theta equals 5 pi thirds, or theta equals negative pi thirds, okay? Um, turns out that these curves actually both intersect at the origin as well. Um, our intersection points over here just, it turns out we're not going to need that point necessarily, but I just want to mention that this algebra that we did over here didn't capture the pole, so just as a side note, when finding intersection points, you may need to find where r equals 0 separately. Because you could have r equals 0 and theta equals something different for each of your curves, but they actually then both go through the origin. So let's just look at that for a second. So I would have 0 equals 3 cosine theta and 0 equals 1 plus cosine theta, okay? Um, so I'd have 0 equals cosine theta, so where is cosine equal to 0? Well, that would be at um, pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2, okay? I'm actually only really interested in values between 0 and pi for my, um, for my circle there, okay? So we'll just leave it at, at pi over 2. For our cardioid, Notice that I'm going to have negative 1 equals cosine theta, where 1 plus cosine theta is 0. So that means theta would be equal to um, pi here. Okay. Um, I would also get negative 1 um, at something like 3 pi, but I'm interested just in the values between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So notice that I have the point 0 comma pi over 2 on the circle representing the, the pole there, the origin. 
um, and then I have the point zero comma pi on the cardioid representing where I pass through the pole. Okay, so they intersect, it's just that you wouldn't find that by doing this, this direct equation. Okay, so how are we going to use this information that we found about our bounds to help us find the area? We have to be a little bit careful. So I can't just do an integral from pi thirds to 5 pi thirds of my 1 half r squared d theta. So we want to think about why is that not what my integral is. Well pi thirds to 5 pi thirds would be taking an area from here to here. Okay, it'd be one way to think about what we're doing with um, polar curves is to think about sweeping out the area between two um, angular lines. So if I think about sweeping out an area from theta equals pi thirds here to theta equals 5 pi thirds, I'm on the left hand side of this. That's not where my region is. So this doesn't capture the right region. Okay, so we can look at this in a couple ways. Probably the easiest way is to use some symmetry here and realize that our x-axis here is theta equals zero. I could think about sweeping out the area between theta equals zero and theta equals pi thirds, and that would capture exactly this part here. Okay, so let's look at that setup and then we'll look at a couple of other options. So using symmetry, we can find our area is an integral of 2 times the integral from 0 to pi thirds. Okay, what exactly are we integrating here? I just wrote 1 half r squared here, but we actually have two different r's, so this isn't quite right here. I'm actually going to have some sort of 1 half, let's say, big r squared minus 1 half little r squared. So let's think about what's going on here. So I want that crescent region between those two angular lines of 0 and pi thirds. So notice, just like we did with our rectangular curves, okay, the area between my curves f and g, I could think of as the area under the curve f minus the area under the curve g to get the area between f and g. So here I can think about the area of my, uh, between my outer curve and the center here, minus the area between the inner curve and the center to be equal to the area between those curves. Okay, so this outer curve was actually the, the blue curve, the inner curve is this red one, okay, and then this is giving me the area between them. So how does that look in our setup here? Well, I would have one half r squared where I have that blue curve is my outer curve. So my blue curve is my circle, so that's three cosine theta squared, okay. Then I'm going to have minus the area in here, right, that I would be subtracting. So this would be one half one plus cosine theta squared d theta, okay. Notice that it's not one half um, the difference of the two curves squared, but it's actually one half the outer curve squared minus one half the inner curve squared. Because I'm taking, um, subtracting a whole big area, okay, or a little um, area here from this big area to get the area between those two curves, okay. And we could simplify how we write this by saying this is one half, pull that constant out here, 3 cosine theta squared minus 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. So that gives us one possible setup. Another way that we could have set this up would be the following, okay? I could have also said that I had the area between, looking at our graph, okay, I could think about sweeping out this whole area between negative pi thirds and pi thirds. Okay, that puts me um, in the right, the right direction here. Negative pi thirds is this angle in the fourth quadrant. I can sweep continuously up to that angle of theta equals pi thirds and capture that whole um, crescent region. So that's another possible setup 
for that um, area between curves. So I could have pi th negative pi thirds to pi thirds of this same thing, one half, three cosine theta squared minus one plus cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, I'll mention just one other possibility with these polar curves, there's often many, many correct ways to set it up. Um, and you would get the same answer in all of those different ways. So if you had another idea of how you wanted to set it up, um, you could check that against the solution that we get for the, these different methods. So we said that the, let's see, the top part that we wanted, let me draw one more sketch here. Okay, so this top part here we said was an integral from 0 to pi thirds, and I could use symmetry to get that whole um, crescent region, multiplying this times 2, but what if I wanted to do this top region plus this bottom region, okay? So how could I do that? So I'd have 0 to pi thirds of the 1 half 3 cosine theta squared minus 1 plus cosine theta squared for the top half, okay? Then I could add this to what? Well, remember this bottom part here um, started at this angle of theta equals 5 pi thirds. Um, another representation of theta equals 0 would be the angle of theta equals 2 pi. Okay, so I could also think about sweeping out that bottom half as going between um, 5 pi thirds and pi over 2. Okay, so that gives you just another um, way to think about this. So this could be from pi, 5 pi thirds. 2, 2 pi of the 1 half 3 cosine theta squared, whoops, minus 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta, okay? Or I could have done twice the, the second integral that I just wrote there, okay? So that gives you several different ways to think about this. So let's look at evaluating just one of these for the additional um, practice of going through our whole evaluation, okay? I'm going to choose the one where I use symmetry, just so I'll have 0 as, as one of my bounds, be a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to do twice the integral from 0 to pi thirds, this is one of our initial setups, of the 1 half, okay, 3 cosine theta squared minus 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. Again, we were doing the um, area of the um, the out outer curve here minus the area inside the inner curve to get the area between them. Okay, so notice this 2 and this 1 half are going to cancel to simplify things a little bit. So I'll have this integral from 0 to pi thirds of 9 cosine squared theta minus, well this 1 plus cosine theta squared will be 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, so I'll have 0 to pi thirds. I'll end up with 8 cosine squared theta minus 2 cosine theta minus 1 d theta. Okay, so notice again I'm going to have this even power of cosine. Okay, so I'm going to need to use that half angle identity that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Remember the sine squared one has 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. For cosine squared we have 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So now applying our identity we have our um, integral from 0 to pi thirds of 8 times 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 minus 2 cosine theta minus 1. Now we'll just have to simplify it a little and take the antiderivative of each of our different terms. So I'm going to have my integral here. Um, when I do, uh, let's see, divided by 2, I'm going to have 4, so this is going to be 4 plus 4 cosine 2 theta minus 2 cosine theta minus 1. Okay, so we can go ahead and um, take the antiderivative of each of these pieces. Notice that this 4 minus 1 is just going to give me a 3. So we'll have 3 theta plus 4 times sine 2 theta over 2, since the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we have minus 2 sine theta. 
and this is going to be evaluated from our 0 to pi thirds. Okay, so we're almost done with this. So when we plug in pi thirds, we get pi here for 3 theta, then we'll have plus 2 times sine of 2 pi thirds. Um, sine of 2 pi thirds would be root 3 over 2. Then we're going to have minus 2 times sine of pi thirds. Again, that's root 3 over 2. And then we subtract what happens when I plug in 0 everywhere here. Notice that'll just be a bunch of um, zeros. Okay, I'll have 3 times 0 is 0. And then sine of 0 is also 0. Okay, notice that this 2 root 3 over 2 and minus 2 root 3 over 2 cancel. Okay, so the area of the region that I am interested in is equal to just pi. Okay, so no matter what um, different formulation you might use, whether we do the one with symmetry for twice the integral from 0 to pi thirds, or the one from doing the integral from negative pi thirds to pi thirds, etc., all of those will give us that area of pi. Okay, um, so let me know if you have any questions on this example.